Hello, my name is David Yandani and uh, this is my kitchen. Uh, welcome and uh, today I'm going to be cooking a uh, chicken with lemon sauce and the chicken is going to be a chicken thigh, skinless, boneless chicken thigh uh, and uh, these are the ingredients that I'm going to be using. Okay, so the ingredients that you're going to be using is the skinless boneless chicken thighs uh, they've marinated that in some uh, toasted sesame oil salt and pepper only and just a little bit of cayenne uh, some chopped carrots salt and pepper some sugar for the sugar syrup which i'll explain some diced onions uh, this is the uh, lemon rind this is a lemon rind that has been chopped and stripped uh, this is the rind from a lime uh, some garlic, chopped garlic, some butter, uh, this is white wine vinegar, this is just some white wine vinegar, this is the juice of one lemon and one lime mixed together, some spinach and some uh, potato chips which have been uh, cut. Okay, to make the chicken we're just going to start by heating a pan with a bit of oil this is just some vegetable oil doesn't need to be too much and your pan should be about 180 degrees mine has gone way too hot so I'm just going to go straight in with the chicken and I'm going to do the back side straight down And that just goes in there, and I'll flip it occasionally until the, until it's cooked. There is a bit of water in the chicken, and it's going to splash quite a bit. So if you haven't got one of these, if you haven't got a splash guy, I highly recommend that you invest in one. And that just sits on top of it like that. Okay, so part way through the cooking. This is the kind of colour you're looking for. So I'm just going to flip them over. Golden brown colour. Probably could do a bit more on that one. Part way through, I'm also going to add some uh, chopped onion. Only because they've been chopped so fine that um, if I put them in earlier, they're just going to burn. So I put them in afterwards because they have been uh, chopped so fine. I turn the heat down a bit because it was getting a bit too hot. Um, and at the same time, I'm going to let that cook. And after after it's uh, finished cooking, I'm going to put it into a bowl. And uh, it's just going to sit in the bowl until I get everything else prepared. Um, my stove is normally over on that side, uh, but. Uh, for the time being, I'm just going to be using this, uh, this camping stove just so that I can show you what I'm doing. The onions are getting a bit dark, which I'm not too happy about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just place them on top of the chicken. They're not going to impart much flavour just by sitting on top of them like that. Okay, 
So what I've done is I've taken uh, the onions that were getting a bit too dark and I've just put them into the bowl over here. I've also added a little bit of uh, garlic and I've turned the heat off as well. So with the heat off, uh, that's just going to continue. There's enough heat in the pan to uh, cook the garlic and the chicken will continue to uh, cook on its own. You can use a similar technique like you do with steak to push on it to see if it cooks. Um, don't rely on it, you should go by temperature, uh, but uh, very generally, if you push on it and it's, uh, and it's uh, harder than like a jello consistency, then you know it's going to be cooked inside. After, it has, uh, after you have taken it off the heat, it will rise in temperature by about 5 degrees Celsius. Uh, and uh, so um, chicken should be cooked well done anyway. I'm also going to add a little bit of butter. And that will melt uh, in the pan with the heat off. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to baste it, baste the chicken in that butter. It smells amazing. Get some of that oil, some of that butter. Let's go straight over the top. Okay, so how do you know it's cooked is by pushing on it and uh, in with chicken when the juices run clear because the chicken itself uh, is a is a kind of like a white meat uh, when the it, juices run clear that's when you know that the chicken is cooked and all the bacteria has been uh, has been killed off from inside the chicken but uh, over here you can see, if you look closely, the juices are, uh, are clear and they have gone from a pink colour to that clear colour. So uh, these should be ready to take off the heat. And they're just going to go straight in the bowl. Okay, so in this bit we're going to be making the carrots and the spinach. Uh, and to do so, we have to turn the heat on. This thing is broken. So heat in the pan, and in the pan we're going to add the carrots and a little bit of oil. And what's going to happen is the uh, carrots are going to be cooking in water. I'm going to add some boiling water when it gets up to temperature and uh, once the water has evaporated then uh, the carrots will remain in the oil, the oil will stay and will start to uh, fry uh, themselves in there. Uh, you don't add too much water, uh, if you add too much water then it just become too soggy. Uh, so now we're at the point, I've got some boiling water over here into the pan. I'm just going to have the boiling water. And to that I'm going to add some salt. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And uh, they're just going to cook for themselves. You can add oil to the water, but don't add water to oil.
So these are just going to cook. Probably could have done with a smaller pan, but that's all I had. Uh, when they're done, I'm going to add the spinach, and they're going to wilt down as well. Over here, I'm going to make some uh, some chips, and that's about the temperature that you're after. Fahrenheit is about 360. Now the temperature will drop when you put them in. But that'll come back up. You're going to do it in batches. And uh, we'll take them out and dry them up when they're done. Okay, so uh, the chips, uh, when they get to about this stage, you can see they stop bubbling. Most of the water is gone. And the temperature rose back to uh, back to where it initially was. Okay, so the carrots, the water has uh, pretty much all but evaporated, uh, and that's okay. I'm just going to add the spinach in, and this will all wilt down on its own. Uh, you can use the water from the carrots to, uh, to help wilt them down. Now check on my chips. The spinach needs a little bit of salt, it hasn't got any. I'm not going to add too much because the carrots are already salty enough. I want them right to wilt down. Check the heat. Going to go and check on the chips. I'm going to turn this off. These are done. There's enough heat in there in the pan to continue wilting down that spinach. See these chips? They're delicious and golden brown. They're just going to go straight on there. Australian favourite chicken salt. Won't find it anywhere else in the world. These are the best chips you'll ever get with the chicken salt. Okay, check the temperature again of the oil. We're very hot, so we're going to turn that down. And we're just going to go in and cool down the oil with the chips. You've got to remember not to put too much oil in the pan because as you can see the, the level rises, the level of the oil rises, it'll overflow. Not a lot of people tell you about that because of uh, fires, overheating your oil and overflowing and panic. So chips go in, again as I said the temperature will drop, which it has, so we're fine to turn the temperature back up again, break them apart, let's get some oil in between each chip, and they're just going to go until the water is gone and they come out crispy and golden, delicious. Okay, so for the sauce, 
what we're going to the lemon sauce what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a uh, sugar syrup to the sugar syrup we're going to add some acid uh, and then the uh, the rind or the peel from the uh, lemon and the lime and the acid we're using is uh, white wine vinegar as well as the uh, lemon juice uh, and lime juice from from a lemon and a lime so we're going to turn on the heat uh, and to the heat, while it's still cold, we're going to add some sugar and that's just going to go and melt down. It's going to take a bit of time to melt down. Uh, and uh, once it has melted down, that's when we're going to be uh, adding in the, uh, the acid. We're going to start with the uh, white wine vinegar. And once the vinegar has uh, touched the, uh, the sugar, it will congeal a little bit, but that's normal. Uh, it then will, after it has uh, heated up to a proper temperature, uh, the sugar again will then melt and dissolve again. Uh, to that we'll then add the, uh, the rind of the uh, lemon of the lime and uh, that will uh, impart some flavour. There is some oils in there uh, which imparts uh, a lot of flavour into, uh, into, uh, into the sauce. Once all of that is done, we'll finish it off with some butter and make it uh, taste very good. If you come over and have a look, you can see it's starting to melt now. You can see around the outside, around the edges, it is starting to melt. Uh, and uh, that's just going to keep going for a bit. I'm going to move it around because when there's a difference in temperature, in the uh, in the ingredients some of it will cook faster than the rest of it and so uh, you need to make sure that it's equal all the way around otherwise you'll have burnt bits and raw bits in the sugar this is raw sugar that i'm using uh, only because i'm uh, i prefer it over the uh, over the white sugar I'm going to mix it up a bit. I shouldn't because it'll stick to the spoon. So we're just going to let that go. See it becomes a bit more runny. I don't want it to burn. I'm starting to get a little bit of uh, smoke out of it. I don't want it to burn. So I'm just going to keep swirling it around until we get a caramel type colour. And it's consistent throughout where all the sugar is dissolved. There is enough heat in the pan to continue melting that. So I'm just keeping it away from the heat. Not sure what that is in there. I think it's sugar that hasn't yet melted. Okay. All right, so that's what you're looking for. You don't want to go too high. Once you get to too high a temperature, it becomes uh, it changes the consistency of the uh, of the sugar. So to that, I'm going to add the um, vinegar. I'm going to stand back a bit. Put it with the water, as I said. And it does congeal. But again, the temperature will rise and that sugar again will melt again. I'm using a stainless steel spoon to mix all of that. Because you don't want to breathe this in. Clear your sinuses. I'm going to try and turn the heat down. You can see. <coughs> oh, pardon me. I'll get rid of that. 
that. I switch to a silicone spatula, just because it doesn't stick to it, or at least shouldn't. To that, I'm going to add some lime juice, lemon juice. The rind, the lemons and the limes. And you can see they've turned into quite a nice glaze. I want to taste it. But right now it's a bit too hot to do so. That bubbling is caused from the oil inside the rind. It's releasing its oil and the water and uh, it's bubbling up. That'll evaporate out. and turn the heat right down and what we're looking for is a kind of a glaze it's very thin at the moment so we're just going to let that go and just reduce that down and all of those uh, delicious flavors will uh, melt together one technique you can use to uh, thicken it, if you are losing too much of the sauce, one technique you can use to thicken it is with some butter. So I'm going to turn the heat off. There's plenty of heat in there already. You just add a couple of tablespoons of butter. Be careful when you do so, it doesn't splatter everywhere. Get yourself a whisk. Get yourself a whisk and just whisk that through. Till you have a delicious sauce. So the heat is off. All the butter has melted through. That, I promise you, will go delicious on chicken. Or any, uh, or any game bird. It'll be delicious. Have a taste. Hmm. It's sweet and, so and sour. Uh, and um, we'll go delicious with chicken.